Cruz Shisti may have sailed through the first 26 of his 63-month sentence, but the controversy surrounding him during this period suggests he hasn't had it easy. Let's look inside Pooh Shisti's life behind bars. Life behind bars. Let's begin by looking at everything that happened to him while he was in jail. Before his legal issues started, Pushisti shared many videos and images online where he proudly displayed cash and jewelry. You can see him with stacks of money, and he even places them on his ears sometimes. However, he and his team pleaded for financial assistance on social media during his incarceration. While Pushisti was at Miami's Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Center, his loyal followers were informed that they could support him by donating money. These donations were intended to cover his expenses, especially for food and legal defense. To facilitate to facilitate the process, Pooh Shiesty's team shared an Instagram story, letting followers know they could send money through Western Union. While some fans might give him money, others find it funny that anyone would send money to a rapper who's already a millionaire. Shiesty would later prove them right in 2023. On Tuesday, February 21st, 2023, Shiesty posted a long message on Instagram, speaking boldly from prison. He seemed focused on his reputation in the streets and how Google listed his net worth. Referring to himself as King Shiesty, he claimed he was still untouchable and had had millions of dollars, three times more than his followers. Well, he currently has 3.4 million followers on Instagram, in case anyone wants to do the math. He asked Google to increase his net worth. He even made a dig at Jay-Z, saying he couldn't relate to his success at a young age. Shiesty also expressed anger towards those talking negatively about him and warned them to stop or face consequences. He mentioned his allegiance to the Chopper Gang. Despite his tough words, he thanked his loyal supporters and promised something special for them in the future. Many people saw this as a desperate attempt attempt to remain relevant. Apart from financial matters, he was also involved in a baby situation. A woman who is not his girlfriend accused the rapper of getting her pregnant. However, he defended himself, claiming his innocence. Chianti, his girlfriend, posted a video of Pooh Shisti talking from prison. In the call, he strongly denied the allegations made by his stylist, Asia Knowles. He said he isn't. The child's father doesn't even know Asia and never had any sexual relationship with her. Pooh Shisti made it clear that he was unfamiliar with the woman in question, as he was heard saying those words through the phone speaker. Chianti got very upset with Asia and confronted her on social media. She posted a supposed ultrasound picture on her Instagram story and accused Asia of faking her pregnancy. In another Instagram story, Chianti said she has asked Asia to stop bothering her multiple times and thinks that Asia is only doing this for popularity on the internet. Asia responded to Shisti and his girlfriend by trying to prove that the rapper was the one lying. She shared a picture of messages she claimed were from the rapper. In those messages, he seemed to invite her out one night, but she didn't reply. She indirectly made fun of Chianti by saying that some people see things differently, like thinking the sky is red when it's blue. Moreover, she threatened to take legal action against Pooh and his girlfriend for harassing and defaming her. She expressed frustration about them ignoring her messages and accused them of paying websites to spread false rumors about her. She said she was about to contact her lawyer to deal with the harassment and defamation. Shisti and Chianti didn't reply to Asia's legal threat. In another video, the rapper was seen wearing a green vest, which is unusual because prisoners or those awaiting trial usually wear orange or tan jumpsuits. Suits. A former prisoner on TikTok explained that the green vest indicates a person may be suicidal. In prison, if you're wearing one of these, it's because you told the cops it's game over, you're done. You don't want to be here no more if you catch my drift. Wearing the vest means the person is under constant watch for 24 hours to keep them safe and prevent any harm, like using it to make a noose. They put you on 24 hour surveillance and they make you wear one of these. You cannot rip this up. And they do that so that you can't make like some crazy thing out of it, like a noose. It's also fireproof, which means you can't set it on fire. We, as convicts, call that thing a turtle suit. After watching the video, fans started sharing their thoughts on the situation. Some were worried, while others attempted to explain why Shisti wore the vest. One person said he did it to be isolated because every inmate go and try him 24-7. It's smart, not scary. This comment makes sense if Shisti was thinking about protecting himself in jail. Another person echoed the ex-inmate sentiments and said, Everyone, if you end up in a turtle suit, it's because you said you were going to harm yourself. Nothing else. Another person believed the authority might just put it on him without his consent. They said, I been in a turtle suit not by choice they made that decision for me and i was okay before his incarceration he was also accused of snitching this accusation was because shiesty had some luck in his case he admitted guilt to one charge and as a result avoided three more charges this reduced his possible sentence from life imprisonment to eight years in prison however whack 100 a music manager known for speaking his mind accused him of doing more to get a lighter sentence in a conversation on clubhouse whack called shiesty a snitch and claimed that he cooperated with law enforcement 
Wack claimed he saw a written agreement where Shisti gave evidence against his co-defendants. Pushisti responded to these allegations on his Instagram stories and denied being a snitch. He clarified that he never made any statements to the government or anyone else in exchange for anything and wanted to educate Wack about his case. He said he follows a strict code of silence called Omerta, which means he never snitches or gives information to the authorities. He won't sit down and reveal things like a weak person. He warns others not to misuse his name and explains the difference between factual and government proffers. He wants people to understand that plea agreements involve giving information that could be used against someone in court. He urges everyone to have integrity and respect like he does. Big 30, a close friend and collaborator of Pooh Shisti, defended him on Instagram. He disagreed with WAC 100's claims and made it clear that Pooh Shisti has been in jail since June 2021 without bail. Big 30 expressed frustration with WAC 100, calling him names and defending his friend's character, saying that Shisti has never betrayed anyone or been disloyal. Big 30 also questioned why his friend hasn't been released like other rappers and accused WAC 100 of associating with informants. Pooh Shisti's attorney, Bradford Cohen, also responded on Instagram to dismiss these claims. Cohen made it clear that there is no evidence or proof supporting the idea that Shisti provided any information. In fact, none of the people involved in the case gave statements or confessed to any involvement with others. The charges they faced were only related to having a weapon during a drug crime, and they all chose to plead guilty. The other serious charges against them were dropped. Cohen expressed frustration with the spread of false information just for the sake of attention. Let's talk about what got him incarcerated in the first place. The crime. On Wednesday, April 20th, 2022, Pooh Shisti was sentenced to 63 months in prison by Judge Kevin Michael Moore in a federal court in Miami. This came after Shisti admitted to being involved in a firearms conspiracy related to an alleged armed robbery at a Florida hotel. In this incident, the rapper shot a man named Brandon Cooper. The authorities say that Shisti met up with the victim to buy sneakers and marijuana. Video surveillance footage shows Shisti arriving at the hotel in a rented McLaren. He also intended to negotiate an extension for this vehicle during the transaction. The prosecution claimed that surveillance footage showed Shisti arriving at the hotel with 21-year-old Bobby Brown, described as his road manager. They were followed by another 21-year-old associate, Jaden DeRosa, who drove a stylish black Mercedes Maybach. Upon Shisti's arrival, one man gave him a shopping bag, while another handed him a bag of marijuana. Prosecutors stated that things got out of hand during the transaction. Pooh Shisti and his friends took the items without paying. As Shisti examined the sneakers from the shopping bag, he pointed a small gun at one of the men, demanding he leave the sneakers. At the same time, DeRosa got out out of the car, approached the second man, and allegedly tried to rob him of his jewelry. When the man resisted, Shisti shot him in the buttocks. Shortly after, Brown shot the first man in the hip, causing him to fall to the ground. Shisti then drove away, but during the getaway, a bag containing $40,912 in cash fell out of the driver's seat of another car associated with him. Investigators were able to link this money to Shisti by matching the serial number of one of the bills to a $100 bill that he had flaunted on his Instagram account before the robbery. Furthermore, Shisti's public public Instagram account featured photos of him posing with a green McLaren and displaying guns and a large amount of cash. Cooper survived the shooting, but Pooh Shisti faced four charges related to it. Shisti and his lawyers disputed the charges against him, saying there wasn't enough evidence that he fired a gun in the McLaren car. However, the judge disagreed, pointing out that the victim identified Shisti as the shooter and a photograph of a nearby vehicle showed a dent likely caused by a bullet shot from Shisti's position. The victim, who was shot in the buttocks, gave Shisti a bag of liquid codeine before the incident but he claimed the man was trying to force drugs on him. He also said the two alleged victims were armed during the incident. In 2022, as part of a plea agreement, prosecutors dropped three of the charges, including one that could have led to a life sentence. Pooh Shisti ultimately pleaded guilty to a single firearms conspiracy charge and was sentenced to prison. Shisti got credit for one year he had already served in prison. If he behaves well, he might be released in three and a half years. His lawyer, Bradford Cohen, was happy with how the judge attentively listened to their argument. Even though no one is happy about going to prison, the court's decision brought satisfaction to both Shisti and his attorney. Many people believe this could only mean Shisti was getting away with a lot of things. While he was out on bail for the crime he was eventually jailed for, he got involved in another shooting case. Now let's examine it more closely. On June 9, 2021, Shisti was arrested for allegedly shooting a security guard at a strip club in Northwest Miami Day during the Memorial Day weekend. He was charged with aggravated battery, as stated in jail records. The arrest warrant, obtained by the Miami Herald, revealed that the incident occurred on May 30th at the King of Diamonds Street 
strip club. A video on Instagram showed Sheasty leaving the club with a weapon after his performance. During the hearing, Sheasty's defense attorney, Cohen, tried to make the strip club incident seem less serious by suggesting it might have been an accidental discharge of the gun. The prosecutor, Ruben Scolavino, claimed that Sheasty got upset because a security guard asked him to put away his gun. According to the arrest warrant, the incident happened around 4 a.m. after Sheasty had finished performing at a strip club on Northwest 72nd Avenue. As he was being escorted out by a security guard, someone knocked money out of his pocket, which caused excitement among the crowd trying to pick it up. This made Sheasty angry, so he went back to confront those who had taken his money. Okay, this was not the first time a rapper will have their things stolen by the fans. In the past, and even more recently, some rappers had their belongings taken by fans. In 2018, this happened to 50 Cent during a concert in Angola. A fan's video caught the exact moment the rapper was on stage. The video shows someone from the crowd snatching 50 Cent's necklace and quickly disappearing back into the crowd. During a show in North Carolina, NBA Youngboy also had his chain taken by someone. While on stage, he stopped the performance to criticize the people who took the chain from his friend. Hey, you see that chain? Hey, you see that chain you just took off my partner, Nick? Hey, that chain you just took off my partner, Nick, that ain't his chain. That's my chain. I ain't really tripping off this he even publicly shamed his friend for losing the chain and offered a reward of 50k to anyone who could bring it back. During a concert in his hometown, Atlanta, the popular rapper Playboy Cardi also had his chain stolen. It was his first time performing there since gaining mainstream fame, and the show was very lively. In footage from the concert, Cardi can be seen shirtless on top of the crowd while they chant along to his song. At the start of the clip, he's wearing a small gold chain, but by the end, it's gone. Later in the same concert, Playboy Cardi addresses the chain snatching. He informed the fans that he had a chain on before he jumped into the crowd, and he knew someone had taken it. He tells the fan who took it that they can keep it, but he's still not happy about the situation. Now let's come back to Sheesty. On his way to confront the fans who took his money, the security guard saw a gun in Sheesty's waistband and told him to hide it to stop him from using it. But later, as he was being taken out of the club, he took out the gun and fired one shot, hitting the guard in the ankle. Thankfully, the guard avoided getting shot in a more critical area by jumping out of the way. Sheesty and his group quickly left the club in a Cadillac Escalade, running away from the scene, according to Detective Daniel Soto's warrant filed with the Miami-Dade police. After the incident, Sheesty went on Instagram to deny the news. This makes sense because if he admitted his money was stolen, it would also mean he actually shot at the guard. Some people on social media made fun of him, and one person even criticized his performance. They said the performance was terrible, and the fans who took his money are only being compensated for enduring such a terrible show. After being arrested, Sheesty was kept in custody by the judge without the option of bail. Sheesty's defense lawyers asked the judge to reconsider their decision. They pointed out that the victim had changed his previous statement and no longer wanted to prosecute Sheesty. According to court documents, the victim's testimony was surprising. He claimed he couldn't remember his conversation with the Miami-Dade detectives because he was heavily medicated with painkillers at the hospital. The victim also stated that Sheesty never pointed the gun at him, and he wasn't sure about the shooter's identity. During the court hearing, Prosecutor Scolavino said they would investigate why the victim changed his stance before pressing charges. Scolavino pointed out that the victim's first statement was clear and descriptive, which raises the possibility that the witness might have been under pressure to change his testimony. Judge Venzer noticed this too. Scolavino assured the court they are concerned about this issue and are investigating it. Sheesty would remain in custody till he was sentenced for the hotel shooting incident in 2022. Let's explore his rise to fame. Pooh Sheesty grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, spending his early years in the Caney Creek Apartments. He also lived in Pflugerville, Texas for two years. When he returned to Memphis, he went to summer school to finish high school. At 18, he discovered his love for music and decided to focus on nurturing his musical talent. Pooh Sheesty began his music journey with his first song, Hell Night, released in March 2019. His big break came when Gucci Mane recognized his talent and brought him into his record label, 1017 Records. Thanks to Gucci Mane's efforts, Shisti also joined Atlantic Records in April 2020. This collaboration led to the hit single, Still Remember, which made Shisti a household name and earned him well-deserved praise. In November 2020, Shisti released what would be his most popular song, Back in Blood, in collaboration with Lil Durk. This track became a major success and solidified Shisti's status in the music industry. The official music video for the song was released in January 2021. Despite his successes, he would engage in criminal activities that eventually led to his imprisonment. Rappers Behind Bars
During his sentencing, Pooh Shisti was made aware of his future after serving his sentence. According to a May 1, 2022 report, the rapper will be under supervision for three years after serving the rest of his five-year and three-month sentence. During this supervised release, he will have to follow several conditions. For instance, he must avoid contact with his co-defendants and the gang members he used to associate with. His parole officer will also have the authority to search his home. The court documents also mention that Shisti will have to complete an alcohol and drug rehabilitation program. The rehabilitation program might not be too difficult for him since he had previously claimed to be sober. In one Instagram post before he was sentenced, the rapper expressed how his skin has improved since giving up on drinking lean. He also mentioned that his mindset has changed and that he feels like he's already in prison. He believes that people are trying hard to portray him as a dangerous person. He ended his post with the hashtag free the biggest. Now that we've seen what is in store for him after his jail term, let's look at situations he will likely face in jail. We all know prison is a very dangerous place for rappers and if he's not careful, he may lose everything he's worked for. Let's look at examples of other rappers who had issues in jail. Now an excellent one to start with will be that of King Von's murder in 2020 has not stopped the late Chicago rapper from being a popular topic of conversation. He recently made headlines once again, this time due to the release of new footage depicting his time in prison. In a leaked video, Von can be seen engaging in a violent altercation with another inmate. This incident, reportedly dating back to 2016, shows King Von and an associate engaging in a scuffle with the inmate. The guards intervene and break up the fight by using mace on them. In the video, the rapper was later interviewed by a sergeant about the incident. Can you tell me what happened? I got mace. Why'd you get mace? I was in the hallway. You was in the hallway? What? I was in the barber shop. Hit the corner. Who makes me skip? I don't know. Somebody makes me. They just made you for no reason? Yeah. Oh, okay. You got any injuries? Yeah. He seems confused about why he was maced and worried because he didn't get any medical attention after being exposed to the painful chemical. He informed the sergeant that he had been sprayed with mace in the hallway and later in the barbershop. He recounted how he turned the corner and someone sprayed him, causing him to fall. Although he spoke with the counselor, he did not receive any medical care. This is the most recent in a series of videos released recently, featuring footage of the deceased rapper's time in prison. On Tuesday, July 18th, leaked body cam footage from November 2017 appeared on social media. In the video, Vaughn can be seen telling police officers about his alleged sexual preference. He did this to be transferred to a safer jail section and receive protective custody. They supposed to be a Christian for they got a problem with gay people. So because of your sexual orientation, you're requesting protective custody, is that correct? Yes. Okay. One officer asked Vaughn if he is requesting protective custody because of his sexual orientation, which Vaughn confirms. Vaughn says that the people who have a problem with gay individuals could be Christians. He also mentions that they tried to make him engage in sexual acts with them. King Vaughn's friends and fellow musicians have spoken up to support him. They clarified that his wish to be transferred was because of the jail's rules. THF Zoo, who is connected to Vaughn and Lil Durk, posted a video on Instagram. In the video, an officer can be heard saying that Vaughn just wanted to be moved across the hall. He doesn't, he doesn't want anything, he just wants to move across the hall. Zoo expressed frustration because this part of the video is not being shown on blogs. They said the blogs were trying to harm Vaughn's reputation. Zoo mentioned that moving around in that county is tough unless you're sick or seeking protection. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, July 19, 2023, another video surfaced online showing King Vaughn fighting with a rival from Chicago while he was in jail. An Instagram account found the footage, which appears to capture the late rapper getting out of handcuffs and getting into a violent confrontation with another inmate in a holding cell. Vaughn walks over to the man in the corner of the cell, and with the help of another inmate, they remove his restraints. Vaughn starts hitting the man repeatedly. After a short while, sheriff deputies step in and stop the fight, putting Vaughn back in handcuffs. The victim of Vaughn's attack, 051 Freaky, is said to have a tattoo disrespecting another deceased rapper, Lay Capone, who happened to be a member of the same gang Vaughn was associated with. This is the most likely cause of their confrontation in jail. Maybe similar confrontations await Shisti in prison. Because like him, Vaughn had always been in trouble with the law before he died. He had been arrested multiple times, including for a shooting and robbery in Atlanta in 2019. His close friend, Lil Durk, was also arrested for the same crime. The charges against both of them were eventually dropped because of the prosecutor's decision. However, the jail videos might be connected to an incident in 2014. At that time, Vaughn was arrested for shooting and killing a rival gang member named Malcolm Stuck 
Stuckey and hurting two others. In May 2014, Vaughn and his friend shot at Stuckey and the others during a party and then fled the scene. Stuckey died because of the shooting. In July of that year, Vaughn was charged with murder and attempted murder for the killing. He was released in late 2017 because the witnesses did not testify against him. King Vaughn got shot and killed outside an Atlanta hookah lounge on November 6, 2020 after an argument with Quando Rondo's group. Lil Tim is facing charges for the murder of the Chicago rapper. Pooh Shisti will likely experience some of these incidents in jail because he has no shortage of enemies too. Casanova is another popular rapper who was attacked in prison. However, unlike King Vaughn, who was mostly seen throwing fists, Casanova's case is by far more serious. Casanova, who was in jail for racketeering and drugs, was attacked by another inmate after he spoke out against his criminal activities with the Bloods gang. Casanova, who awaits sentencing for multiple felony charges at Essex County, got into a violent fight with another inmate and possible gang member, Ulysses Lugo. According to internal reports, he was slashed in the face during the altercation. Casanova, along with other inmates, then retaliated by slashing Lugo's face multiple times. An anonymous officer described the scene, saying that both Lugo and Casanova had faces covered in blood. Earlier that month, Casanova wrote a letter to the judge, expressing his wish to break away from the gang in the hope of receiving a lighter sentence. The letter also included statements from his loved ones supporting his decision. However, on Wednesday, 28, 2023, he was sentenced to jail for 15 years and 8 months. Pushisti definitely won't want to get into bloody confrontations in jail, or maybe like Casanova, he has allies who will fight with him. Just when you think things can't get worse, there's the murder of money sign Suede in jail. He passed away at the age of 22 in a California prison. Officials from the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation reported that Valdez was attacked and killed in prison, where he was serving a 32-month sentence for gun charges. His lawyer, Nicholas Rosenberg, revealed that Valdez had been stabbed and an investigation is underway. People are deeply shocked because Valdez was well-liked and had a calm demeanor that made him popular among others. Valdez was born to parents who emigrated from Mexico and grew up in the Huntington Park area of Los Angeles. At 16, he started recording and sharing rap songs online. While still a teenager, he got signed by Atlantic Records. His breakout song, Back to the Bag, became a hit in the rap scene after its release in 2020. In 2022, he had a productive year, releasing a self-titled EP in March and his debut album, Parkside Baby, in September. Unfortunately, Valdez had a troubled past involving firearms. He was sentenced for two counts of firearm possession in Riverside County, California. This sentence became more severe because he violated his past convictions parole. He served a 10-month sentence for it between 2020 and 2021. At the time of his death, he was also dealing with another gun charge conviction in Los Angeles County, and he was expected to serve that sentence at the same time. Pushisti may have sailed through 26 of his 63-month sentence, but these examples highlight why Pushisti must exercise utmost caution for the rest of his stay in prison. If you like this video, just tap the card on your screen now to watch more videos about the hip-hop scene.